All right, welcome to Drill Down Earnings. We've got a quick look at the latest earnings from Workday. This is the business story behind one stock and a move. And I'm Corey Johnson, Future Arm Group's chief market strategist. Workday, first quarter 2025. Interesting company, interesting quarter. Most of the numbers were good. One of the numbers was bad. Let's go through the numbers. Wall Street likes a beat or a miss, and this was a beat. Total revenues, $1.99 billion. Can we call that $2 billion in revenues? Up 18%. Their subscription business, which is most of the business, they they sell software subscriptions, and then they have some professional services that essentially help people install and run them. So subscriptions up 18.8%. Um, and uh, you know most of the numbers pretty good. Uh, their operating margins, the company's actually making money now and generating lots of free cash flow. 33.4% of uh, uh, the revenues floated right down into free cash flow, which is great. But if you look behind the numbers, behind the numbers, look, an 18% growth rate is better than they had last quarter. And a bet, when a business gets this big, to reaccelerate growth is a powerful thing. Um, now, uh, interesting, the professional services business, as I mentioned, the kind of installer crowd, that shrunk just a tiny little bit at 9%. And it makes me wonder if part of that was about AI. We'll talk about that in a second. But I want to mention the backlog. The backlog is the business that they've signed up, some of the money that they've taken in to, to do work in the future and contracts that they have. For the first time ever, that number turned negative. It was down sequentially 1%. We haven't seen that. I think that's probably why the stock sold off after hours and it did. And as I mentioned, professional services declined just a little bit as a percentage of revenues. I made this weird chart so you can see the chart, the base on the chart, 75%. The top is 100%. And you can see as a percentage of revenues, there was a tiny but perceptible decline over the last few quarters and even the last few years. And I wonder if part of that is AI. A little more self-service in their business means less professional service, which the users might like, might be a little cheaper for the users, but over the long term, not great for the professional services business at Workday. So how did the stock react? Again, the guidance, uh, not fantastic. And that backlog number, disconcerting, so right after hours, the stock plunges, falling, I don't know, a little bit less than 10%, but that's on the heels of a 35% move over the course of the last 12 months. So maybe it doesn't matter that much. But the, the other concern here is growth outside of the United States. So for a long time, it's been believed that uh, the U.S. is a great business for them, and the greater business might be outside the U.S. because it's an untapped market for Workday. And they continue to tap that market, but not growing any faster than the U.S. at 17%. What happened last quarter, it looked like it was finally going to break away. This quarter, not so much. The company has specifically cited EMEA, but when I asked about it in a conference call, the new CEO, or somewhat new CEO, his co-CEO for a while, uh, Carl Eichenbach, said that it was nothing to worry about. They got the right leaders in place. They got the right product. Just the Europeans and others not responding yet. We have new leaders. We're going to market differently with pricing and packaging. We're going to market differently with partners over there. We've added a lot of capacity. Um, so everything we're doing in Europe, and for that matter, the rest of the world, I think are all positive things. I don't think this is an execution issue at all. This is just a, a pocket of softness we saw uh, you know, outside of the U.S., and it was because of the factors we talked about, and specifically in EMEA, Last Q1, we, we closed a large uh, number of bigger deals. We didn't have that same close rate this Q1. So the year-over-year -year compare was a bit tougher. But I don't think this has anything to do with what we're doing or how we're executing. In fact, I'm really bullish on the leadership team and how we're going to market and the changes we've made outside the U.S. So what's it all mean? What's your big drill on earnings takeaway? The one number that tells us a whole lot? I'll have that right after this. The Drill Down is brought to you by Futurum Group, where analysts, researchers, advisors, content creators, and marketing experts help business leaders anticipate and understand shifts in their industries and build strategies to leverage disruptive innovation. With deep analysis, Futurum Group's extensive industry experience delivers reliable research and data, thought leadership, and actionable advice to help you with your strategy and go-to-market efforts. Futurum Group. So Workday just reported first quarter earnings, and look, the earnings were pretty good, up 18% with on the top line at almost $2 billion in revenue subscription, business doing even better, 18.8%, .8%, um, and a lot of operating cash flow, which is kind of new for this company that lost money for well over a decade, 
and free cash flow lots of it. But I promise you the bite, the one number that tells us a whole lot, and that number is negative 1%. On a sequential basis, this company saw its backlog fall. We've never seen that from Workday, and it's not a great sign. Uh, you want the backlog to grow? It's not. We'll see what happens going forward. Thanks for listening to Drill Down Earnings. Find me at X at Corey TV, on Instagram and TikTok at Drill Down Pod, and on the YouTube page for Futurum Group, Drill Down Earnings, part of 6.5 Media.